Can I maybe kill this guy? Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Nice headshot. Just before the siege tower crept into view. Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband and our native series. Now uh, when we left off we were actually doing battle with King Ragnar here and you can see that he's actually uh, not very agreeable. He actually wants us to die or yield obviously and uh, well, I think that fate would be pretty bad for us. Yes, it would be pretty harsh. So instead of yielding or dying well, we might actually die or get knocked unconscious or something like that. But yes, instead of doing one of those things, we're going to try and eliminate him. Now, we do have 63 each on the battlefield. That is only due to our tactic skill. Our tactic skill is obviously the main reason why we're actually able to be on an even footing here, because he outnumbers us, usually. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to try and shoot a couple of arrows off here. And maybe see if I can maybe just weaken a couple of them, maybe get them to charge in or something. Yeah, there's a nice little hit there. And maybe I'm going to get maybe just one kill. I don't really mind either way. Where, you know, if, if one kill is perfectly fine with me. Don't usually use my bow in a field battle anyway. Oh, we were actually able to get a Saranid Master Archer a kill there. Not too bad. All right, so let's just charge straight on in. There's literally nothing we can do apart from that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they just came extremely close to us, didn't they? Which is kind of weird. It's, uh, that is kind of weird. I mean, this is native, so I suppose they are not going to be using too many advanced strategies or anything like that. But you can see here that we are just running them down. I mean, we have so many cavalry that really they... I don't think they stand a chance unless they have a huge amount of huskals, which I think they're actually starting to give us here. A couple of Nord veterans actually coming in. And we do have to be a bit careful of those guys. They are very effective at what they do. I am not very effective at what I do, though, as you can plainly tell. Oh, there we go. We're actually able to get a little bit of extra damage here. Maybe I'm able to take out a couple. There we go. I don't really need the experience, but, you know, it's always, it's always good to get a little bit here and there. Nice. There we go. Yes, there we go. 125 damage is pretty decent for a 78% increased speed bonus. But, I mean, when you say that, you just kind of think, well, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're able to kill them in one hit, it doesn't really matter. Any speed bonus will do. That is what Barney says and thinks, anyway. Let's see. There we go. Nice Nord Warrior kill. Oh, a Swadian Knight? Really? Come on, now. How dare you, Swadian Knight being killed by a Nord-trained footman. That's not very good. Well, I, I really shouldn't speak because literally I can probably get killed by a peasant if the conditions are right, you know. Sometimes I'll run in there and get absolutely murdered by five Nord Huskars and after the dust has settled and I've eliminated all of them, which is highly unlikely, but you know, if that indeed has happened in the past or, you know, some similar situation. And then a peasant comes along, and then he's like, I've got a stone with your name on it, and then he just takes me out. That has happened, I think, <laughs> in, a di in a slightly different situation, obviously. It's not going to be five Nord Huskals or anything like that, but me running in, generally getting weakened, and then being taken out by a very, very low-level unit, that has happened many times before, so... Yeah, not great. Anyway... We were able to eliminate the enemy, and uh, King Ragnar is obviously not going to be very happy. So let's see what he decides to do now. 17 right now. Didn't decide to do anything by the looks of things, so it's just 100 against 108. And now, well, it's actually still the same battle advantage. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. I would have thought that we would have a bit of an advantage now because of our tactic skill, but it seems not. All right, let's see if we can do a little bit of damage. Well, we stopped him. That's all that matters. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a mercenary horseman. I was actually kind of thinking to myself, hmm, that's not a Nord. He's not going to be on a mount, that's for sure. So, that was, that was kind of interesting to see. Ooh, I think they have a couple of Huskals here. I actually did, I think I've seen one. So the, the classic Huskal armor. 
And let's just see if I uh, let's see if I can maybe target him down, if at all possible. My Kurgit Lancers are taking the brunt of this attack here because my infantry are obviously being a little bit slow to get into the action. But I don't really mind too much about that. I mean, as long as <laughs> as long as no more Swadian knights die, I was not going to say. But yes, oh two really two Swadian foot uh, Swadian knights were, were killed. Ah well, never mind. There is a Nordhask car right there, as you can see. And there he is. Yeah, take him down. There we go. That's what we like. And I think we're I think we're pretty good now. I mean, as long as we were able to eliminate that Nordhask Carl, he was just cutting swathes through our lines. So it would have been really bad to leave him alive. And it's nice that we got him down. And after this is complete, what are we going to be doing then? Oh well, we are going to be attacking Curin Castle which is very, very close to us. And uh, indeed, it is the castle we were attempting to take when King Ragnar decided to rudely interrupt our conquering of his lands. And um, yes, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's very, very pleased to uh, be dead on the floor. Well, technically, he's knocked unconscious, I would assume, because he hasn't been in any of these battles. I'm actually really surprised that I've been able to survive these rounds, to be honest, because usually... You know, my survivability in native is not the greatest. I mean, in the previous couple of episodes, you've seen me go into sieges and just being like, oh, let me just go and, you know, hit my head against that many, you know, those many, many arrows coming streaming towards me. And, uh, yeah, that's usually how it goes. And, uh, yeah, so in these field battles, a very pleasant surprise not to get eliminated so easily. And there's only six renown for that, but that's all right. I'm not going to be taking any prisoners with the exception of King Ragnar if we can get him. I'm also not going to be taking any loot because it is not necessary. We have so much money. It really is. I mean, I could literally lose my entire kingdom and it would take me probably a million years. I, don't quote me on that, but it would probably take me a huge amount of time to lose all of that money. And by that point, I'd probably have... I, I don't know, I recovered at least a little bit from that setback. So yeah, I'm just going to continue to level up some units here. And I mean, just bear in mind, we have so many different kinds of units, but most of them are not very high level. So obviously that's the reason why we're having a couple of difficulties dealing with these sieges. And it would be kind of nice for us to maybe form an army at some point in the future, near future, whenever I can find the time to do that, of some unit that is going to be consistent, consistently good, shall we say. And this is exactly the reason why I'm not taking prisoners or taking any loot, by the way. If you can see there, Nara is giving us 11,500 plus the rents of 2,600, which is just absolutely crazy. And that's the main reason why we're actually in profit. Because without that, I think we might have a, a couple of difficulties. I think we might. Anyway, there you go. Not too bad. So we do need to be a bit careful if Nara does come under siege, which is highly unlikely at this point, I'd say. Unless there is some amazing commander in the enemy kingdoms, it's highly unlikely that they are going to venture all the way in to our territory near Nara and be like, oh, hello there. Let me just take your town very fast and completely eliminate your money making capabilities. Yes, that's probably what they would attempt to do if they were a little bit smart. But it seems like they're not wanting to do that right now. And Sungetcha Castle is being besieged once more. <laughs> I mean, it has been the target of many, many. Oh, look at that. We actually took that just now. Yes. The Kingdom of Reformia actually did just take some Getcha Castle. So yeah, it has been the target of many, many sieges back and forth, back and forth between us and varying other kingdoms. I believe the Vegeas as well as someone else was attempting to take it. And they're just fighting back and forth. And I think that's actually really cool how many of our vassals are actually a little bit more independent. And they're just doing their own thing and attempting to take castles back from the opponent and that's really nice because usually they're not necessarily the greatest when it comes to that kind of thing autonomy is a bit difficult for them so it's nice to actually see that happening for once 
Anyway, I'm going to get out my bow in just a second and try and deal some damage here. But these guys, I mean, you know how you know how they are. They're Nords. They're going to have very, very heavy shields in the case of the Huskars, of course. And I'm going to try and use my feeble archery skills against the feeble archery skills of the Nords. And we'll see how I'm able to do here. Maybe I'll be able to do something. I mean, I need to level up my power draw quite badly, I feel, because then I, I might be able to get a better bow. This bow is... I mean, it, am I just aiming badly? Or what? what is actually... No, I, I'm, not, I'm not aiming far up enough by the looks of things. There we go. Okay, and there's a nice... There's the nice level that we need to go for. And let's see if I'm able to get a little bit more here. They're, they're side strafing. They're side strafing and attempting to dodge our focus, which is not very nice of them. Okay, there we go. If you could just stand still and take my arrows in your face, that would be nice. Yes, they're not going to do that, are they? No, they're not going to do that. Wow, that was that was absolutely pitiful. Awful. Awful. Okay, well, never mind. We are able to pick up some more arrows from the ground here because they, as I've said, are just as feeble as I am. And uh, it's kind of weird because I actually have some pretty good accuracy with my bow at the moment. But it doesn't seem to reflect itself in my performance, which is a bit weird. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's just because I'm not actually seeing where the arrows are flying and maybe I just need to make a... There we go. Okay, so there's a, there was a nice hit there. Maybe I'm able to... Yes, there we go. All right. Getting a little bit more used to it now because this bow is kind of weak when it comes to its power. Oh, nice. Two headshots in a row as well. And we've eliminated the archers on this side completely, which is what I like to see. All right. So it, are there any other arrows here? Yeah, there's a whole bunch. Okay, so let's just take that. Don't want to pick up any throwing weapons by mistake because you know how that's going to go. I'm going to pick up some throwing weapons, and then I'm going to be like, What? I lost my bow? Where is it? And then I'll never find it again. Yeah, that's usually what happens. Okay, so we have 30. That's amazing. We have 30 arrows. So I'm going to try and see if I can maybe do a little bit of damage to the archers. Uh, to the archers. To the infantry that are currently kind of defending the walls here. Oh, look, there's someone. Hello. You can't do that. I'm sorry. There, are, you, you, you need a permit for that. There we go. Taking him down. And maybe we can take this guy down as well. Oh, really? He had that much HP to survive two shots? Yeah, I guess he did. 22 and 23. That's not really that much damage. Oh, nice. Yes. Getting some nice flanking action. And that flanking action is going to then come in with some nice headshots, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I've got to take out that guy. He's throwing weapons. It is not good that he's throwing weapons. If he was throwing the kitchen sink, I would say that he might be a bit more dangerous, though. But it seems like we have... we have his number. He seems to have run out. Does that mean he's going to throw the kitchen sink now? Because if he's run out of throwing weapons, then that might make more sense. Okay, come on now. It's rather amusing. You take out the guy that is in front of this fellow, and then he starts throwing weapons himself. Yeah, it's not very good. Oh, we're getting some nice headshots. I think the main issue with this bow is that you really cannot shoot from very far away. If you shoot from far away, you're not going to get very much results. Because, really, it's just going to be like, Oh, I'm not powerful enough to shoot from this distance. Can you please reposition yourself? That's probably what the bow would say if it had a voice. But anyway, we're going to get ready to get into the Mattelmans. Mattelmans? Yes, Mattelmans. That's what I said. All right, so we are ready to get onto the battlements, and we're going to try and slaughter everyone in our path. Yes, take this, and don't fall over, Barney. Thank you very much. I would appreciate it. Okay, we've got to be a bit careful here. I don't really want to die, even though they would they would absolutely appreciate it, which I would not. There we go. Ah, uh, their, their, axe, their axes, no, their swords and their axes are a little bit quicker than mine by the looks of things, or maybe this, this guy just has better weapon proficiency than I do. I'm not doing very well in the survival department at the moment. Yes, Jeremus has advanced, very nice. He is our medic after all, it would obviously benefit us and him if he levels up. And I'm actually kind of surprised he gained a kill to be honest, to begin with. Very surprised. 
Kick him. Yes. There we go. The first time I've ever used a kick effectively, shall we say, instead of just, you know, replicating the, ah, this is Sparta kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, oh, there's a whole bunch of fellows over here. You know, I'd actually really like to use a two-handed weapon. Because using it against the Nords is kind of fitting, wouldn't you say? Because usually they use two-handed weapons, with the exception of their, their shield shield bearers and things like that. But their archers are surely going to be using two-handed, so it would kind of make sense. But, hmm, maybe I should get some kind of big two-handed sword. That might be kind of fun. Maybe maybe I should just get a Bardiche, because I've said multiple times in varying series that I actually really enjoy using a Bardiche. And it's the Bardiche that you can use on a mount. It's not the not the polearm variant, it is the two-handed variant as far as I recall. And I highly recommend checking it out if you are a fan of two-handed weapons. It's really, really good. And, uh, oh, there you go. Nice. Okay, we, I was actually thinking I'd have to go all the way up to the archer nest and eliminate whoever was there, but no, no. That was that was good enough, and well, well, we didn't have to take care of anyone very deadly, as you can see there. Only a couple of Nord warriors, and we can technically rescue a whole bunch of units. And I suppose we're going to be doing that because, I mean, let's face it, I really don't have the opportunity right now, right this second, to replenish my ranks. So being able to rescue some prisoners and convert them to our side, that's the best I can do at the moment. Anyway, uh, hmm, now here's the thing, I'm actually unsure who needs, Lord Akadan, I believe. Yes, there you go, Lord Akadan. Garmal is not liking that at all, Lord Play, not so much, but he's already in the negatives, so that's alright. Alright, so Lord Akadan has Curin Castle. We've lost Sungetra to the Kingdom of Aegeus, which is a common occurrence, nothing really to worry about there. And obviously Bardak Castle has been taken, or shall we say, one of the Rodox sneaked it somehow. Not entirely sure how he was able to do that, but anyway. I don't know whether you saw, but Sungetcha Castle has now been placed under siege once again. And the Kingdom of Rodox has uh, <laughs> taken Grunwalder Castle. That is the castle that we were attempting to take over that entire episode, quite a few episodes ago, and uh, then there was a rather dramatic interference by someone. I won't reveal who it was if you want to watch it, but anyway, let's see if we can level up a couple of our fellows here. Ooh, nice. Six new Kurgit Lancers. That's exactly what we need to replace the forces that we lost here. And there's 41 in Curran Castle's garrison. Maybe we should go over to Horus Castle. Ah, Kingdom of Reformia has taken Etros Castle from the Kingdom of Rodox. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Look at that. They're just acting by themselves. And Lord Merchoud has decided to besiege Grunwalder Castle itself as well. So I think we have a really, really good basis for our vassal choices right here because it seems like Lord Druli and whoever took Etros Castle, I don't know who that was, but Lord Merchoud is now attempting to take Grunwater Castle back too. Now of course they are not attempting to take things that are silly. In other words, they're not trying to take, I don't know, a town with over 500 defenders because that would be a, a little bit ill-advised because, you know, they're not going to be in, uh, you know, superiority in terms of numbers, or maybe even in terms of troop quality. But them attempting to take things that has just been taken, that's really good, because that will give us much more presence in the area, and will now allow us to maybe have a little bit more control in that as well, and maybe destabilize the region in doing so. And I think that's a pretty good idea. Anyway, we're going to try and eliminate Jarl Harangoth right here, who used to be, as far as I'm aware, a Swadian. And we're going to see how many... Oh, I have 35 cavalry. I think I really don't need to use any kind of tactics here, because he has 49. I mean, we should be able to eliminate him pretty easily. But I'm going to place my archers and my infantry in reasonable positions anyway, and I'm going to take my cavalry with me. And we're going to try and launch a bit of a not, a... not a... not really a sneak attack, because he already knows where we are and everything, but we're going to try and devastate him so much that we can kill him in a very, very short period of time when we have engaged. Because that will reduce the 
amount of chances that they have to eliminate many of our forces. I'm going to just tell my infantry to charge straight on in here, and we're going to tell our cavalry to charge in now as well. And just look at the devastation that this is going to wreak upon our enemies. Oh yes. Not bad. I'm actually able to get a couple of kills myself. Which is kind of amazing, because usually I'm not particularly good when it comes to going in here with my with my cavalry. Usually I'm much better when I'm doing like hit and run attacks. Because it seems like it's just a little bit clearer the target that I need to take. But there you go. Very, very quick. We did actually lose a couple of units. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that we actually did lose some. So I guess that's the reason why we want to be a bit more careful about these things. And that's what I was attempting to do. But apparently these Rodok veteran spearmen just did not want to serve me. So they decided, hey, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this guy. I'm out of here. And uh, yeah, they kind of bit the bullet, so to speak. Anyway, we're going to go into the marketplace here. I'm going to buy a whole bunch of food and various other foodstuffs. And then we'll head on to Hrus Castle. All right, so we've arrived at Harus Castle, and I actually just noticed that Sungecha Castle is now ours. I believe it was taken by someone yet again, and I think it was actually... I think someone was attempting to besiege it just now. But as you can see here, Harus Castle actually does not have anything to worry about, with the exception of the Siege Tower. That is obviously a bit of an issue, and we are going to, of course, attempt to take it. So it's going to take us 48 hours to build this siege tower, and hopefully no one will appear. Now, obviously, the only fellow that really wanted to appear, or had the capability of doing so, as you can see as we take back Grunwalder Castle from the Rodox. Very nice indeed to see that. And yes, they are just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with all of these different fiefs, which is absolutely fine, because our vassals... That is really their purpose, with the exception of me calling them for a campaign or, you know, wanting them to kind of reinforce our ranks in any way, shape or form. That's really what they're meant to do. They're meant to take back and secure our territory as much as possible. I would much prefer it if they were able to defend against these, these interlopers that are attempting to take our things all the time, but... Some of the time that's just not possible, so we just have to roll with it and, uh... Just be thankful that our vassals are actually doing anything at all, because I do know that some vassals, they tend to be a bit lazy. They tend to just kind of stay back, away from the action. And that's not really good. So it's nice to see that they're actually taking an active role in what we're attempting to do here. And hopefully I'll be able to, yes, there we go, eliminate some of these archers a little bit quicker this time around, because last time... Obviously, I spent most of my quiver not really being able to be that effective, so that wasn't great. Uh, there we go. Nice shoulder hit right there. Another one. And eliminate it. Nice. Can I maybe kill this guy? Maybe? Yeah, there we go. Nice headshot. Just before the siege tower crept into view. Wow, there's actually a lot of them. These guys are not the greatest in terms of archery, though. I mean, they're they're just regular Nord archers. They're not actually veterans or anything like that. So we really shouldn't have too many difficulties. I think they actually do have a couple. I think this is a veteran right here that I'm shooting. He's taking much more damage. Yep, that was a Nord veteran archer. One of my Swadian sergeants has been eliminated by a Nord veteran archer. So, yeah, I mean, that's the point. They're not actually that bad. They're just not as good as the other archers in the game. So, if you want to have insane amounts of infantry and then have them backed up by decent enough archers, then the Nords are definitely the way to go. 16 arrows. We've reloaded. Let's do this. Maybe a nice headshot to celebrate getting 16. Nah, okay, never mind. I'll just kill that guy and then... Oh, take him out as well. Oh, surprising. Surprising. Nice. All right. Well, we actually did get a couple of headshots there. I was hopeful that I'd be able to just get one-shot kills, but obviously that... Does not always happen. Maybe we'll be able to shoot that fellow, though. There we go. And there are actually a couple of archers in the archery nest. So I'm going to have to see if I can maybe 
Oh, we actually, oh, do you see that? We actually did get him. His head was poking out ever so slightly, and we were able to get really, really nice sneaky headshot on him. He unfortunately did not perish from it, so obviously we'll have to head up there and, well, have him say hi to our axe, perhaps. There we go. I'm just going to pick up a bunch of arrows just to make sure that we have what we need just in case. Just in case we need to support our units a little bit more. Anyway, we've only eliminated 25 of the enemies so far and we've lost 7, which is not all that bad because obviously the archers of the Norns are not great. And they're going to be expected to be a little bit less effective than, say, the Vegiers or the Rodox with their insane crossbowmen. Those crossbowmen are just crazy good, and uh, I'm kind of dreading going back there, to be honest. I think the Nords are a little bit easier to deal with if they don't have a huge amount of Nord veterans and Nord Huskals in their garrisons. I mean, we've seen in the previous episode there was a castle that I decided not to go for because it was literally chock-a-block full of insanely high-tier units. I think it had... didn't it have, like, 30 or so Huskals or something? And you can imagine that I mean, I have, I think, about six or seven Huskals in my army, and whenever you see them get a kill, they usually get two other kills at the same time. Look at this. Look look at that. Yeah, I saw a Nord Huskal just get a kill, and I was like, oh yeah, he's going to get a couple more. And he is. That's exactly what he's doing. And that's exactly what they do every single time. Whenever they're in any kind of battle... Oh, well, we just, we just lost three of them. We actually just lost three of them. That is not particularly good at all, but I was trying to make a point, Nordhuskals. Ah, oh, well, never mind. They decided to completely try to prove me wrong, which is fantastic of them, isn't it? Ah, oh, never mind. Okay, well, I was going to say that the Nordhuskals are fantastic and they're very effective at what they do, and uh, yeah, if you have 30 of those, especially in the defense, they're much better than Rodok Sergeants, and we've seen in previous episodes that the Rodok Sergeants are still capable of being, being extremely good when it comes to defensive measures. And, uh, yeah. Huskars are just better in every way, and if you had a whole bunch of Huskars, then you're going to be having a really, really tough time of things. So, anyway, we're going to try and get in here. Could you just move real quick? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. So now I'm going to try and go up to the archery nest here. Should I even try to do that, or should I just... Okay, you know what? I think I am going to need to go up there. I don't really want to, because I have a feeling that we might take more casualties than we know what to do with, and as a result, we might actually lose this in general. But if I don't eliminate the archers up here, I have a feeling I'm going to be targeted down by them if I am attempting to jump down into the courtyard and do a little bit of well, shall we say, behind enemy lines action. And that's what we kind of need to do to reduce the amount of casualties we're having here. So if I can maybe take these guys out, we might have a better chance in total. So let's see if I'm able to do it. Ah, it took a little bit of damage there, but we did eliminate all of the archers. That's exactly what we wanted to see. And now if I'm able to... Oh, hello there! I am going to rain down death and destruction upon you, Nord Huntsman. I don't know why you're not moving. There we go. Oh, there's another one. Let's take him out as well. Having having the height advantage is absolutely hilarious as an archer. It really is. Okay, so here's the thing. Me doing this has now, as you can tell, dwindled our frontline forces by such a massive margin that I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to sway the tide at this point. I mean, I'm going to have to head down these stairs here. And I mean, you can see, I've lost huge amounts, huge amounts of units. And the enemy has also lost huge amounts, but not as many as us. We only have 24 units remaining, and they have 38. So if we're unable to succeed here, this is going to be it. And we're going to have to head back to friendly territory and try and recruit a whole bunch of new units. And that's certainly something I don't really want to do, because we are in a really, really good position right now, and that position is... Oh, dear. Yeah, okay, so this is this is exactly what I meant. Ah, oh, well, never mind. Yeah, never mind. Okay, we're going to have to retreat. Go, go, go. Okay, phew. 
I was a bit worried there for a second. We might actually get taken prisoner here. We are actually getting taken prisoner. I'm very surprised. I gotta say that I'm very surprised because we did actually have six units still available to us. Hmm. Well, there you go. Probably should have retreated a little bit earlier, but I actually thought that we might be able to succeed. But we just weren't able to. And I'm going to accept the offer of 47,000. It really isn't a big deal. But you can see here that we did lose a couple of our companions. They are still in the prisoner's hold here. But there's only 46 out of 69 still available in the garrison. And we will be able to return and hopefully rescue a whole bunch of our prisoners. You can see that there's 87 of them available for rescue. So let's do that in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.